All right, folks, happy Monday. Uh, this is Mr. Miller back here again, and this is Monday the 4th of April. Um, I have yet to turn my little trusty calendar here, so I will do that right here uh, as we're waiting, because otherwise I will forget, and then I will look at it again, and I will say, wait a second, it's not April, like I just did. Um, okay, there it is. That's how easy it is. These, these calendars that the Kilburn Agency puts out, these are super easy to use, user friendly, super easy, uh, just a just a great quality calendar here. And now it's May, so uh, turn the page, uh, literally and figuratively, uh, into uh, into May. So uh, what we have uh, for today, uh, you undoubtedly have heard by now. I hope you would have heard by now. Uh, the governor on Friday uh, made an announcement saying that we are not able to go back to school for the end of the school year. Uh, so that means through the end of June, uh, at this point, we're not allowed to go back. So that is like really sad, obviously. Uh, sad for me. Uh, I think even, even uh, the people that I've heard from, people who I wouldn't really expect to appreciate school, uh, have all been saying, wow, I just wish I could go back uh, just to get some sort of routine again uh, and to see all my friends or uh, see all my teachers, whatever. Um, it's, it's a sad thing. I think, I think the, there's very few people who are happy about this. So uh, kind of the long story here, we kind of have to follow what the governor says because uh, we're, we're trying to all collectively uh, stay safe and stay healthy and schools like it or not happen to be a place where sickness can travel really easily So all that being said we just uh, the governor made the choice to not uh, to not open them back up so um, Like I said very sad. Uh, I, I do miss seeing everybody uh, So that's that's sad, but then also people who are who are missing out on a lot of things so uh, I would I would say don't don't focus or try not to focus on that stuff that you're missing out on uh, and instead try to uh, build connections through this time that you wouldn't be able to build otherwise um, I guess I don't know I don't really know what that looks like but I, I would just I would just say you know don't dwell on the negative side of all this uh, as negative as it sounds uh, it's not all bad we are gonna stay safe through this and we will still uh, see each other virtually uh, potentially so uh, that's about all I've got there, but um, we're going to kind of continue on, okay? We already know that there's not a Regents exam. Uh, we don't know what the end of the school year is going to look like for us, but uh, my goal for you is to uh, have a good understanding of United States history uh, by the end of this school year. So whether or not we see each other or not, which is looking like a not at this point, um, we are still going to continue on and still going to uh, kind of advance in our studies so that we can uh, kind of fulfill that goal of being somebody who has who has learned uh, United States history uh, at a basic level so then you can kind of take that forward with you uh, to the rest of your life. So that's kind of my focus uh, going forward here. Uh, that's kind of the the place where we need to where we need to be. So with all that being said, I'm going to uh, pick up today with uh, some topics 16 through 18 notes, which you guys all got on Thursday, was it Thursday? Yeah, I think it was Thursday. Uh, we'll go through some notes today. Tomorrow, I've got another worksheet to look at, and I'll explain that at the end. Uh, there will also be a bonus video uh, that I will attach to this Google Classroom uh, announcement thing. Uh, it will be on some conspiracy theories that I want to... Uh, share but don't want to take extra time if you feel like you don't uh, don't want to hear the conspiracy theories uh, but they are interesting and almost always uh, a very popular uh, very popular topic to talk about in class when we go over them so I would recommend watching that video I don't know how long it's gonna be I'll make it after I make this uh, but we're gonna talk about John F Kennedy and the also the moon landing conspiracy theories so um, and we'll deal with both of those things in general today but I'll give you some extra information in those in that extra video so where we had left off was uh, number five talking about the uh, talking about the civil rights era uh, the civil rights movement we've already gotten through uh, Martin Luther King jr. we've already gotten through uh, Martin Luther King jr.'s fight to uh, I guess get equality 
but we've also gotten civil rights, uh, civil rights act, uh, the voting rights act, the 24th amendment, all of those things that we had mentioned at the end of class on Thursday were all very, very popular in terms of, uh, the African American community and people who were actively advocating for those, uh, for those movements to kind of continue. Now there was, uh, I guess two groups that we got to talk about here, but, um, that's kind of one person followed by a group that kind of used his ideas. So we've got to talk first about Malcolm X. Uh, Malcolm X is a civil rights leader, just like Martin Luther King Jr. was. Uh, but Martin Luther King Jr. was not exactly the same type of person as Malcolm X. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. advocated for civil disobedience, uh, advocated for uh, kind of, I guess, uh, refusing to refusing to follow certain laws and certain things like that. Um, Malcolm X was a radical, a radical guy. Uh, he was a radical Muslim, uh, Muslim minister, I guess, I guess he would be called, but he was a Muslim guy and he was a radical guy and he promoted something that we would call black power. Okay. Black power. Now Malcolm X ends up getting assassinated here, but his ideas uh, end up continuing on. So uh, M Malcolm X gets assassinated in 1965. Even after all these laws were passed, people were still fighting to uh, improve relationships with improve relationships with uh, all sides of society here, specifically in regards to African Americans trying to improve those relationships. So uh, 1965, he gets assassinated, but other groups end up picking up uh, where he had kind of left off. Uh, picking up what he had, uh, picking up what he had uh, advocated for. So this black power idea. Uh, the main group that ends up picking this up is called the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers were a uh, party, I guess you might say, not in the purest form of a political party, but that's what they call themselves, the Black Panther Party. Uh, they were a militant group uh, trying to uh, protect and unify African Americans. So uh, I don't know if I have a picture of this. I should have looked through here. No, we do not. Uh, there's pictures of Black Panther rallies standing on uh, the front steps of state capitals and whatnot, uh, or courthouses, and they're like holding shotguns and things like that. So that's what they would do. Um, so they are trying to protect and unify black people, uh, but oftentimes uh, their movement ends with violence towards, uh, towards the police. Uh, and these these guy or these people, the Black Panthers, uh, were very very different. Like I said, uh, very different from Martin Luther King Jr. and his perspectives and his ideas. So, the Black Panthers. I'm sorry, that's number one. I kind of had a half yawn earlier, but I'm not counting it. So that's number one. Uh, the Black Panthers here, very very active uh, in the second part of the 1960s advocating for African-American rights. So in this, uh, in this picture or on this slide here, on the left, you have Malcolm X uh, and on the right, you have a group of Black Panthers. Uh, they wore berets, uh, leather jackets. Uh, that was just kind of how they did. Uh, they would wear their hair naturally, like in an Afro, oftentimes growing it out, uh, which wasn't really a thing that a lot of people did back then. Uh, but they started to uh, bring that kind of into uh, into popularity a little bit more. Now, let's go ahead and talk about uh, John F. Kennedy, okay? JFK and uh, Johnson. So these two guys, they have acronyms that we use. Uh, John F. Kennedy uh, is there, so JFK. Uh, his successor we'll talk about, his name is Lyndon B. Johnson, and we'll call him uh, LBJ. So Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ, John F. Kennedy, JFK. Uh, so JFK here, John F. Kennedy, as we'll refer to him as uh, JFK, uh, he ends up r defeating uh, Richard Nixon in 1960. There was a uh, presidential election in 1960. Uh, Richard Nixon is a future president, but he doesn't win right now. Uh, this election happens to be kind of referred to as the first television election uh, because they had, uh, to my knowledge, it was the first debate, uh, first televised debate that was... Uh, televised for everybody to see uh, when they were going through the campaign. Number two, I'm sorry. Uh, so JFK and Nixon, they kind of uh, break ground in this new frontier of TV. 
So they sit down for this debate. John F. Kennedy, he had just gotten off of a, a long time campaigning and he was like all suntanned and uh, looked pretty good. He's a handsome guy, most people would would say in that picture there. Uh, so so he ends up getting kind of, he, he looks, uh, looks the part. Uh, he looks cool, looks collected. Uh, looks uh, strong in this com or in this uh, debate. He also wore a bit of stage makeup to make himself uh, look uh, a little bit more tan than he was because when you're on stage, the bright lights end up uh, kind of making you more pale than anything. Uh, Richard Nixon, his or his opponent, uh, the Republican, was Nixon. Uh, Richard Nixon ends up um, basically refusing to wear uh, any makeup. He comes across looking very pale. Uh, comes across as like he's got like beads of sweat on his forehead. Uh, so he just looks like he's uh, got his feet up against the fire. He's in hot water here in this debate and he doesn't look that calm. So John F. Kennedy ends up kind of taking this and running with it and, and he looks like a very, very calm and cool and collected guy. He ends up winning, uh, winning the presidency as a Democrat in 1960. Uh, when he becomes president, he promises uh, what is called uh, a new frontier or the new frontier. Uh, the new frontier is his plan. Man, number three, I gotta have a sip of my ice cold Dr. Pepper. One sip, one sip. Um, so uh, John F. Kennedy here uh, has this plan called a new frontier. A uh, new frontier is similar to other people's, uh, like FDR's New Deal or Teddy Roosevelt's Square Deal. And we've talked about all those before. Um, you've got you've got plans that people come up with, and then that's what they're kind of known for. So John F. Kennedy is known for his New Frontier, as it's called. Uh, John F. Kennedy's New Frontier: some things that it advocated for that I would write down. Uh, trying to focus on the economy, okay, the economy, the money in our country in our businesses. Uh, education. Pumping money into our education system. Okay, that's one thing that he wanted to do. Uh, number three, uh, health care. Okay, uh, medical care for Americans who might be underserved or not have a lot of medical care. Uh, number four would be uh, civil rights, okay, advocating for uh, the things that Martin Luther King Jr. was advocating for. Uh, a lot of those laws that we talked about being passed, the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, they were John F. Kennedy's ideas that then got finished after he ends up dying, which we'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, so he had ideas to focus on civil rights. And then uh, number five uh, would be space, okay, uh, space, going to the moon is kind of one of the, one of the focuses. So the space race is something that we'll talk about in our next slide here. So John F. Kennedy, to uh, pay for all this stuff that he wants to do, he ends up taxing rich Americans. Okay, that's kind of the classic response. Uh, tax rich Americans who have enough money or have a lot of money to go around. Uh, also uh, raised minimum wages for Americans. So the poorest Americans make more money. And he also improves a program Is that number four? That's number four. I can't believe it. Okay, one sip. Just just one sip. One sip. Just one sip. Um, raise the minimum wage, and he also improves a program called Social Security, which was put in place by FDR uh, during the uh, New Deal. Uh, it advocates, or it kind of gives uh, money for people as they retire. Uh, so you pay into it uh, for uh, your lifetime when you're working, and then when you finish working, you can draw out of it. So improve Social Security for those uh, people who are drawing out of it. Then uh, he also doesn't really uh, tackle uh, doesn't tackle civil rights yet. Uh, he's still interested in it and still has ideas, but he doesn't want to ruffle too many feathers. Uh, he just won an election and he barely won. Uh, it was a close election in terms of the vote, so he doesn't really want to burn any bridges or make any enemies right now. So civil rights has to wait uh, until later, a few years down the road. Now, number seven, okay, number seven is the conspiracy theory-laden 
uh, number here. So number seven, starting with the space race. Uh, John F. Kennedy, when he uh, gives his, uh, I mean, he gives a few speeches in which he kind of outlines this, but John F. Kennedy sets up goal and he says, sets up a goal. And he says, by the end of the 1960s, I want to have a United States uh, astronaut on the moon, a man on the moon by the end of the 1970s. So that's kind of one of his focus, put a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s, by the 1960s. Did I say the 1970s? I meant the 1960s. By the end of the decade, uh, put a man on the moon. So we end up with a mission that sends a man to the moon. Uh, we had a number of these missions and a bunch of them were unsuccessful. And then finally we were successful in July, 1969, 1969. So uh, just six months short of being in uh, the end of the decade, uh, and we finally set set foot on the moon uh, in a program that's called Apollo 11, or that was the that was the uh, mission that was flown. Uh, famous people in this mission: uh, Neil Armstrong. Uh, you've heard uh, this. I think this picture here is a picture of Neil Armstrong. Uh, there was also a guy named Buzz Aldrin. Uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, not Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Aldrin. Uh, so. Neil Armstrong famously said, uh, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And he kind of says it all muffled as it comes across. Uh, so that's Neil Armstrong and that's the famous line here. Now there were a ton of people watching this thing worldwide, uh, watching this thing live as it happened. Um, now, uh, they said that they had a video camera up there and they broadcast it back down to earth. Okay. Which, I have no reason to not believe, uh, so that is what it is. But uh, they figured that about 500 million, million with an M, 500 million people watched this event worldwide. That is uh, like three times the amount of people that are in, well, no, not three times, like twice as many people that are in America at this point. So people are watching it around the globe, not just in America. Uh, but a lot of people, if you uh, have a grandparent, I'm sure they could tell you exactly where they watched this. Um, or maybe parents if they're old enough, but probably not because my parents were only um, six or only yeah, six and eight at the time when this had happened. But they remember it, so maybe. Uh, but, but your parents are probably younger since you're 10 years old, 10 years younger than I am, 11 years younger than I am. Um, Anyways, ask a grandparent they were probably watching or ask somebody over the age of 60 and they probably know where they were. Um, so there's some conspiracy th theories about this uh, landing on the moon, landing on the moon. So I'll put those in this uh, extra video uh, that I'll post alongside this. I don't know how to do that cool thing like YouTube people do where they're like, oh, I'll, I'll put this in the video right, uh, right about here and then burp, uh, a link pops up right there as they point at it and then it goes away. I don't know how to do that cool thing so I'm not going to try because I don't pretend to be something that I'm not. Although I am a YouTuber now so yeah. Uh, anyways uh, let's move on to um, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Okay the assassination of John F. Kennedy is uh, probably the highest profile of all the assassinations that have happened in American history. Uh, the most famous one to this date would be uh, Abraham Lincoln getting shot and killed by John Wilkes Booth in Ford's Theater um, while he was watching a play back in 1960 or back in 1865. Uh, but this one, I think because of all the conspiracy theories surrounding it, takes the cake uh, with the uh, with the level of notoriety with this. So all that being said, let me explain a little bit about this. Kennedy is on a trip to Dallas, Texas in 1963. Uh, in 1963, he ends up uh, traveling in a parade or a motorcade to go somewhere else. I don't know where he was actually going, uh, but he's traveling here uh, in the back of this, uh, in the back of this limousine. And he is, uh, I guess this is a limousine technically because there's three rows of people. Uh, but he's just riding along, waving to people, and next thing you know, he uh, he gets shot. Uh, he his arms his arms kind of uh, his arms kind of go up in the air like this, 
and then uh, next thing you know, his uh, his his uh, head kind of explodes. So yeah, it's not really nice. It's uh, it's obviously not good. Um, but uh, he ends up getting shot and killed uh, at this point. So they wheel off to the hospital and they go to the hospital and they pronounce him dead there. Now, there is a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding John F. Kennedy's assassination, and I will tackle some of them in the video that I'm going to put right here. Just kidding, I'm not putting a video right here. But I'll tackle them in the video that will be on this page. So watch that video if you're interested, okay? Because it is, it is a very high-profile assassination, and they're interesting things to talk about. Now, I don't think I have another picture here. Oh, there's a picture of the place where he was assassinated called Dealey Plaza, uh, Dealey Plaza, downtown Texas. Uh, they said he was shot from this building up here, uh, this uh, six-story brick building, uh, seven stories? Yeah, seven stories. They call it the uh, Texas School Book Depository. Uh, but they weren't sure if there was only one shooter. Uh, the one shooter was called uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, the, they weren't sure if there was one shooter or a second shooter uh, that was positioned somewhere over in here on the left-hand side of the picture uh, called the Grassy Knoll. And I'll talk about all that in that video that I'm going to put right here. Just kidding, I still don't have a link there, so I don't know why I keep doing this, but I, I'm not going to put a video there. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the link, okay? Or maybe I will. Maybe I will put a video here. If I can figure it out, I'll put one there, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, so I don't know. Just go to the link, watch the short video about the conspiracy theories. It'll be interesting. It'll be your, your moment of enlightenment for the day, okay? Beyond being enlightened like you already are. So, um, yeah, this is a shocking event for most Americans. Uh, at this point, also, most Americans who were living over the age of 60, 65, because uh, this was in 1963, uh, most Americans could tell you exactly where they were the moment they heard that John F. Kennedy was shot and killed. Uh, it is a ground-shaking moment for Americans. Uh, John F. Kennedy was admired by a lot of people. He was this young, charismatic president. Uh, even Republicans liked him, uh, Republicans and Democrats. Maybe not everybody liked him, but everybody kind of respected him and, and saw a lot of value in what he was fighting for. So uh, this is a shocking moment for a lot of people. So with all that being said, uh, we are going to move on to uh, number eight here and then wrap up with number eight. And uh, I will, again, ask you to go on and watch that conspiracy theory video if you want to. It is a fun, fun conversation to have. Although we are talking about somebody dying, it is still an interesting conversation to have. Uh, and we'll talk about the space, uh, the landing on the moon and the Kennedy assassination all in that video. So go ahead and watch that if you would like to. Now, uh, number eight here. Uh, Johnson's Great Society. Uh, this is Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson is his name. Uh, L-Y-N-D-O-N. I don't have his uh, name written on the board here. But Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, we call him LBJ. LBJ uh, for short. So LBJ here. He's John F. Kennedy's vice president. He is a very long-serving senator from Texas. Uh, and he knows how to play politics. So he becomes president after John F. Kennedy dies. Um, and so he becomes president, takes over uh, the role. And he has a new plan uh, that's called the Great Society. Forget the new frontier, it's now the Great Society because that's Johnson's plan now. The problem is Johnson ends up using a lot of, I guess it's not a problem. Johnson end up, ends up using a lot of the ideas that uh, Kennedy had uh, and just kind of continuing them on. Uh, and finishing them. So kind of uh, imagine for a second, like if you're playing football and Kennedy is like the running back and he gets to like the two yard line uh, and then they send in the, the finisher, okay, the uh, Derrick Henry of sorts, if you're a football fan, uh, he pushes it over the goal line and gets it, gets it in for the touchdown. That's my analogy for the day. Um, if that made no sense to you, I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, the Great Society, continuing on, same ideas with, uh, with uh, Kennedy, but his main focus here was uh, kind of, uh, the Great Society is often called the War on Poverty, the War on Poverty, meaning that Johnson is trying to fight back against poverty, trying to end poverty in America, uh, trying to, to end the ability for someone to be living in America and still be poor. 
So he's uh, trying to help out poor people, trying to help them out in terms of education, in terms of health care, and we'll get into all that, uh, get into all that. There were about 20% of all Americans who were living in poverty in 1960. 20%. It's one out of every five people who were living in poverty across the country. By the end of the 1960s, uh, by the year 1970, that number is down to about 10%. So this war on poverty, for all the critics and all the negative sides of it that we'll kind of mention, uh, it was uh, successful, I guess, in ending, uh, in ending poverty or at least limiting poverty. Now, a couple major programs that we got to talk about that were in this great society. <coughs> uh, they are listed right here. Uh, the first one is called Medicare. Medicare. Medicare is health care for the elderly. Health care for the elderly. Uh, and Medicaid is health care for the poor. So Medicare for the elderly, Medicaid for the poor. Now, you might be asking yourself, wow, how am I ever going to remember these things? These things are too confusing. It's Medicare, Medicaid. How do I remember which one's which? One's the wealthy, one's the, or one's the, the old people, one's the poor people. How do I remember? Uh, I've got a, I've got a helpful, helpful analogy, or not an analogy, a saying. Now, I don't know if I came up with this. I think I did. If I did, trademark me. But if I didn't, I'm sorry for stealing it from whoever I did. Um, Medicare, I remember, because uh, Medicare, you care for the elderly, you care for your grandma, you care for your grandpa, okay, so you give them care. Uh, so Medicare uh, is care for the elderly. Medicaid, you provide aid or assistance to poor people, uh, people who need the help. So you aid or you help the poor. So you care for the elderly, you aid or you help the poor. That's my trademarked uh, saying. Care for the elderly, aid the poor. Medicare for the elderly, Medicaid for the poor. Uh, that's what I remember it as. So I would write that down, okay? But if you ever hear anybody saying it, say, Mr. Miller came up with that first, I think. You can say I think at the end, because I think I did. Um, now, uh, this provides basic health care, health insurance for needy Americans. Uh, this all comes out of taxes that are on people's uh, people's wages. Okay, so taxes come straight out of my paycheck to pay for things like that, uh, to pay for Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, so lots of money uh, goes into these programs every single year. Uh, fun fact, uh, in modern day America, uh, I want to say the number is about two thirds. Uh, two thirds of all the money that our country spends in a year goes to three programs. Three programs, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Three programs our government pays two-thirds of all of our money I think uh, I haven't looked at the statistics recently but uh, it's somewhere around that it's over half uh, of all our money goes to those three programs so uh, yeah that's interesting often people are like well do we actually need these anymore and a lot of people say no we don't because they cost our government a lot of money and maybe people would be better off just taking care of themselves uh, so there's, these are controversial programs that get passed in the 1960s. So uh, that is um, kind of the deal with this great society. We're going to look at tomorrow uh, a few other uh, great society things, uh, programs. Uh, I've got a chart that I'll have you guys fill out tomorrow. Uh, we'll be spending tomorrow and Wednesday on this, uh, on this activity. So uh, I will detail that tomorrow, but that's what we're doing. No notes tomorrow, but that'll be that. Now, uh, I've got two essential questions for you to answer real quick. I apologize I went over, but I was talking too much about John F. Kennedy and all that stuff. So I apologize. If you want to watch uh, the uh, conspiracy theory, uh, conspiracy theory uh, episode or whatever you want to call it, a uh, short video about that, uh, I say short, it'll probably be 10-ish minutes, 10-15 minutes about both conspiracy theories combined. So if you want to watch that, feel free. It's good watching. It's interesting. So I would, I would recommend doing that, uh, but it's not required if you don't want to. So uh, I think that's all I've got for you. Uh, again, I apologize for going long. Uh, I, pr I won't. I won't tomorrow, I promise. Um, so yeah. Uh, 
I think that's all I got to say. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to be done. So answer those essential essential questions and watch that uh that conspiracy theory uh short video uh if you would like to. So uh be on there. I'll see you guys again tomorrow and take care. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay inside. Bye.